In the last video, I already show you how to get started with IPy uh, widget. In this video, we're going to continue to uh, do IPy widget so that you can put all the widgets uh, together. So basically, you can think about a container. Within the container, you can have all kind of widgets together. And so first, let's go to the website to download the noble example. We're going to use geodemo.gshub.org. Then on the left side, notebooks, click IPy widget uh, box. And as you can see from here, this is the example we're going to develop. Uh, you will see we have all kind of buttons, uh, uh, sliders, and also drop down list, text, color, uh, picker, and also a uh, text box. So this is how we're going to go through how to actually to create something like this so that you can use this to interact, uh, to create interactive widgets uh, for your uh, Python uh, package. Upper right corner, click the download button and to download this one to your computer. After that, you can open your Anaconda prompt or your terminal. So I'm just going to right click, open uh, Windows terminal. If you happen to have this one uh, in the uh, contextual uh, menu, you can click the store, uh, Windows, uh, Microsoft store, and then just search, search uh, PowerShell. Then you should be able to install this one. So once it's open, then you can use Conda activate demo. So this is the Conda environment that we created before. Then you can just type Jupyter Notebook. Apple, Jupyter Notebook. Then it's open uh, Jupyter uh, within your browser. Click the Notebook example. So in this one, uh, we're going to use the, uh, continue to use the iPad widget. So this is the one we're going to use. You can double click. So this is basically just uh, within the markdown. It's just a simple uh, image. And if you uh, this is just to show you the example you can use this to as a, a kind of a, a, a starting point to create all kind of widgets and i if you already use a gmap i can show you here close slash create an interactive map so gmap uh, is the package data developer and also has a lot of uh, interactive widgets if you click the upper right corner here uh, and this is all kind of buttons that you can use to do uh, interactive mapping and analysis for example if i click this button uh, it's going to create something like this so essentially uh, the elements they are the same they either checkbox slider text box drop down this right everything here pretty much here yeah. you can also have buttons uh, these are things you can create using the ipad widget this is a little bit more complicated but uh, in this video we're just going to design this uh, uh, gui so graphical user interface and then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually to uh, execute something. So when the user click a button, you want to execute something or when the user select, for example, is from the drop down list, uh, you might want to change the settings, right? So if I maybe give you another example, I click this one and I click this button. So once it's open, right? So this is something similar. You can have a drop down list and keep that in mind. So when I select drop down list uh, to a different uh, item, uh, the interface can change so you can customize right you can have more options i uh, have uh, less of op few options i have this one and this one right things can all be changed depends on how the user select uh, uh, uh select an item from the drop down list but this is just, just an example there are a lot of things you can do for example i can also click this one it's going to hide um the interface and you just click it's going to stay there right so up if i click close go to close the entire widget but you can certainly click and uh, reopen again if you if you want immediately for example if you click this one i can also click the base map so if you can change the base map if i, if I want right i can check change any uh let me see here probably something is a laser bug in here it's supposed to be anyway i'll look into this uh, later but uh, just to show you example how you can develop an interactive uh, 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 widget then put it into the map okay so next let me control c this one so what we need to do uh, first we need to import uh, ipy widget so we can just import ipy widget as widget so this is the convention uh, you don't need to do this but uh, just follow the convention so you'll be shorter so just widget and then you can set for example a widget uh width so the widget width basically is just this one so you are going to have a uh if you want to develop one uh graphical interface you need to have for example decide uh the width of the entire one because later when you have 
different components of uh, different widgets within this container you want them to have the same the same length right so the length to be equal and this is what uh this one is about so 250 uh, pixels also the padding uh padding i'm going to show you later but what does this mean by basically uh, you can put some uh space like white space um to the four corners right so from the upper uh corner right so you basically have four corners for example in here this button right uh upper and then the right bottom and then the left so those are the four corners you can define this one uh it will uh, make it easier for you to uh um make it looks better basically okay so the first one we're going to create here uh is just a button so the button can be a regular button a widget dot button in the last video i already show you how to create a button but this is a toggle button so the toggle button basically when you you can have a, a state if there's just a regular button you click and then it returns to normal but for the toggle button when you click uh you can stay there it, it has a state let me execute this one first just to take to take a look right so this is a toggle button if i click you will see it's kind of a grayed out but uh you, it's a little bit darker if i click again uh, this is what you can change right so toggle button uh is something in here this one we're going to try to uh, uh emulate and again so let's take a look at some of the options so for most of the widgets uh, it's going to have a value so you can pass in a value so the toggle button is either is click or not click so if this click that mean it's false uh it's true if this not click then it's to be false you can also have a two tip right so if i hover my mouse over this uh two it's going to show you here the two tip you can change this one if you want also the icon uh, this one right now i use a gear but you can click the link here to choose any icon you like for example there um i think more than 400 uh lots of uh, icons that you can choose from you can just grab the name for example retweet for example if you just take this one and come back to here uh, you can change this one to retweet uh, it will change the icon so this is how we can customize the icon also you can change the layout the width for example the width the height and the padding here this is the one i we define here let me show you if i don't use this one take a look at here uh this might you will see there is going to the right let me change it back to gear oh. e -E -A -R. all right so if you see from this one here 28 right now the icon is a little bit to the right because by default the uh the padding is a bit higher so you can change it to smaller you can also if all of them the padding is just zero you can put it as for example just as zero and if i execute this one uh so now you want to basically to the uh the, the left you want to have a little bit uh higher padding so let me change it to four and similarly in here so the padding belongs to uh is a property of the layout so you need to put everything in here don't just put in here and then enter the padding equal to something uh it's not going to work so something that controls the layout uh you need to put it in this way so the layout is a, a layout class and within that class you can have different x uh different attribute so padding now it looks better so if i click i uh also you can change for example later if you want to change the uh attribute you don't need to go back to here you can actually everything is basically you can customize a later once the widget is created all the attributes is become uh, interactive so it's a widget that you can change things for example if you want to change the width let me change to for example let's say uh 50 right so if i make change you will see right now this gun becomes a lot much uh, wider um you can also change the height if you want the height also equal to 50 it gets much much bigger so this is how it can control uh the uh height and all kind of attribute you can also change, control the icon let me add the other one here i can change to for example toolbar dot icon equal to we now get change to map here it's being changed so this is very nice because uh whenever you're execute, executing something if you once the user interact with the button or the widget you if you want to change something then you can i will show you uh, in the next video but for now just so you know that once this widget is created uh everything can be customized still okay so let's change it back to just uh 28 
or maybe just execute this one one more time uh, it returns to more normal so this is how we can customize i'm going to remove this too once you uh, create a widget and as i mentioned earlier it has a state so basically you can get whether the button is clicked or not two button button the um the value if you execute right now it's false but click and execute again you should expect two because uh it is it has been clicked if i do it again again it returns to false so you can always get the value and this is how you can figure out what the user actually um interacts with the uh uh your your graphical uh, user interface okay so this is the first button right yeah uh, this is the uh, gear icon and then we're going to deal with this one this one is uh, an, also another toggle button this is how you're going to close the uh, widget uh how you can close one and very similar right the value equal to force and the two tip icon toolbar button and this one we add a style so so in here if you change the style to primary uh it's going to change the color to blue but i think there's also not maybe info okay change it to a uh, setting color there's also another one i think uh angel maybe a n g r not quite sure okay so angel is like a red color and primary is the blue color so this is the button and okay so we finished the first two then how we can put those two together in one single row is that ipi widget has kind of container like uh h box h represent uh horizontal so it's going to put those two as a horizontal box together and within the parentheses it has a, a square brackets so essentially this is a list we execute now you see this uh who are being put together so when i click the button right if I, this one is click all the previous instances are also click so if i click this one you see it's also being changed and basically you only have one one or only one uh, widget behind the scene so although you can display it multiple times but those are just kind of what you can see as a view of the instance those they share behind in the in, in the scene they share the same stuff this is nice right so you can use it multiple times similarly right you can the horizontal box parentheses always make sure that you put them in the break uh, uh square brackets and this is how you want to put all the widgets together you can add more if you want so for example if i want to add another copy i can also maybe just close um banner you see here we can add more so you can add more any number of a uh, widget if you want all right so you more okay, a lot more so this is how we can put them all horizontally so the horizontal box uh, within the list everything is going to be aligned equally on the same line uh, so this is why it's called horizontal box and you can probably uh, uh, guess that there's going to be another v box uh, vertical box so here uh, this is horizontal and then how we put this all together this is vertical so vertical like it's it's row it's column right so next we're going to show you how we can add some slider and uh drop down list okay so next let's get to oh similarly uh you can do in this uh this way widget to xbox and then uh, if you don't assign it to a variable it's going to be directly displayed under the uh whole block in here but you can also define just a box uh horizontal box and then so the width the horizontal and vertical box they have a attribute called chosen and then the chosen you can pass in a list uh, this is exact, essentially the same just like list line but uh, the reason that we might want to use this because later once this widget is cre uh, created so if the user click on an icon uh, it's going to like show you something if they click another icon it's going to uh, hide something then we can basically control the chosen uh, to uh, display or to hide a certain item so this is a common way that i usually do is just create an empty box and then it depends on what kind of options the user click uh, you can show or hide certain uh, widgets right so choosing and then this is the list i'm going to execute uh, you're going to get the same uh, stuff like what we did earlier like this is just the two buttons that show on the first uh, first row of the uh, widget okay so next i'm going to show you here the checkbox and also the slider let's execute this one uh, the checkbox is relatively easy 
you have a description and then you can but whether you want to indent it or not this is how you can check the check boxes also you might want to have the padding but this one here will pass in the widget width because um uh, although it doesn't take the full uh, uh length uh, full width of the entire widget but when you have multiple ones and uh, you might want to align them so this is basically how you uh, we want to design the widget you want to put them all together or you want to have the multiple uh, lines and next one uh, the drop down list drop down list you can have multiple uh, options right so uh, as i showed you earlier the gmap right you can select from the option and the, you can also set the default value if you put to none uh, it's not going to show you anything in here so but you are also welcome to just directly put on option for example you can just put option 3 and uh, or you need to have space otherwise it won't work okay so by default it's going to use the whatever option but that option needs to come from one of these right so if if it doesn't exist you want to get an error message so this is option 2 if you don't want to show any options and by default you can just put to none then it won't show the option until you click similarly we have the padding we have the uh, widget width so this is the in the width that we're going to use you also you might want to use this one description width uh initial if you don't use this sometimes it's being cut off so let me maybe just delete this one and then let's take a look uh you see it's being indented uh to the right so I remove this one longer but if you have a longer description for example just like this and if you don't use this uh, uh descri description with initial you might not see the entire description so as you can see now uh because this description is too long and it doesn't show you the full length so some of those are being cut off if you want to see to show them entirely so we need to pass in the style parameter and use this way so no so that you can have the full uh length did this one Okay, so next one uh, is uh, ink slider. So the ink slider, as you can see from this one here, we will select uh, the slider. Also, you might want to read up. Uh, it can change to two, so they can see the value of the of the slider. So when I use the read up, you will see the slider becomes much shorter, and there's some like white space between the slider and the number. So this is by default, and um sometimes this can take a lot of uh, space this is kind of uh, uh, unutilized and uh for now you cannot really change the width so this is kind of kind of, kind of a limitation and uh i'm going to show you how you can have a kind of a, a, a work now that you can reduce the spaces so basically this is a label the value we're going to create another widget to get the value and then so this one can get uh, a little bit, bit larger again uh, i'm just going to change this one to force so that you have a slider that can be a little bit uh, long uh, wider and then i create a widget called label uh, label widget then i can link these two uh, uh, the attribute of these two widgets so the ink uh, slider this one has a uh, attribute called value similarly the ink slide uh, ink slider label also has a actual value so anytime when i'm using the slider i also want to the value uh to the right and what we just need to do then you can create a so-called horizontal box to put these two widgets together okay so now we have these two if you see if i slide to the left to the right uh, this one right now it the white space is much smaller compared to the early one so this one looks better and this is the reason that why uh you don't necessarily have to have two widgets together uh, you can just use the in slider and then change the read out to two then you 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 can have uh, the same function but sometimes it takes a lot of white space and i don't like it so this is kind of a workaround uh, you can create another label widget and then link the attribute together then you can put those two widgets on one single line within a horizontal box then you can have this similarly you can do it for the the floating uh, widget again uh, now yeah, when you uh, slide the uh, it's going to have a value also you, you can pay attention to the continuous update right so if i set this one to two when your mouse uh drag the slider it's good you're going to see the value being updated if you don't sometimes because when the user is uh, sliding the uh um the 
changing the slider. If it's too much, if, if the slider also activate like uh, trigger something, you don't want to run like too many times. So you only want to run the command or execute certain function when the user release uh, the mouse, then you can change the value. So this one can be changed to continuous update to false. And we can take a look here. Uh, when I change this one, it doesn't change the value until I release. So, right, so this is sometimes you might want to use this one if needed. I'm going to change to two so that you can see the value in real time how it's being uh, changed. Next one, color picker. So if you want the user to allow to them uh, to pick a color, then you can use this way. You can click uh, the color picker. It's going to show you the hex color call. Then you can pass this one to your program uh, when the, the whatever color the user select, and then you can execute something based on the color being uh, select. You can have a value, so the the value can be a, um, a hex color code, or it can be just a regular color. Some of those will be recognized by uh, iPad widget, but uh, probably something, for example, white four five. This is no kind of a color. You 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 won't be recognized. So you see here, instance of STM color. Not the string uh, white 40, 54, but you can change to, for example, maybe red. This will be recognized, right? So you see here by default, you're going to change to red. And you say a blue. Oh. Change to blue. Let's change the default color. You can also put, for example, hex, uh, pound sign, and then maybe uh, FF. Zero FF right RGB. So the first two uh, digits is green, a uh, red, green, and blue. So right now, if I FF, uh, what color is this? Lighting color. Right. So this is the mix of uh, green and blue. Next one, uh, text uh, widget. So this is how we can allow the user to enter something, and this is probably the most common one. You can have a value. So by default, if you want to provide a value, you can provide it. And the description here is on the left placeholder it is uh, if you don't want to enter a default value but you want to have show some hints or tips to the user then you can enter this one for example enter your name or for example enter your name whatever also the description with uh, initial so this, similar to the the one i showed you earlier if your description is too long uh, if you don't use the style um, description width to initial, sometimes we're being uh, cut off, so you only saw, uh, see part of the description. Next one, text area. So the text here is only just one line, so everything will be entered in one line. But if you if you want the user to enter a, a, a longer description or longer text, then you can use the text area. So this one is much much longer, and it can be uh, the size is flexible. You can the user can drag and drop. Uh, to change the uh, the size of the widget and similarly you can have a placeholder uh, you can also have a default value if you want uh, this is how you can do it also we change the width to the widget width because we all will just like i mentioned earlier you if you want to control the maximum width then you need to set the width uh, the uh, width uh, otherwise if you don't set this one it's going to be a much much larger one so if i delete this one you see this one is two sides, right? So we can, by default, it's going to be a little bit wider. So when you put them all together, they are not aligned together. So you want to have this one, the maximum. Last uh, here is the button. So we want to have the toggle button, for example, apply, reset, close. You can have more buttons if you want. And we here we use the toggle button because if one of them is click, the others will be unclicked. So let's check. click this one, this one will be unclick, right? Click this one, click this one. But you can also have three individual buttons, uh, that's fine. But you sometimes if you need to, because this you can only click one of those. Um, similarly, you can do the like three regular buttons uh, if you want. But we're going to use the toggle button. So anytime when the user click, uh, you can also, after this being clicked, you can deactivate this one. So return to the unclick uh, status. I'm going to show you in the next video. But for this one, just uh, use the toggle buttons. Lastly, we can have the uh, output widget. So the output widget is when the user, for example, click on a button, 
if it is a long running uh, process, you might want to show something like what the program is doing. Otherwise, people will have no idea whether uh, is something wrong or is it frozen or is it working or not. So this is how we can have an output widget. The output widget is pretty much the most powerful one because you can put anything within the output widget. You can have widget within a uh, widget. So think about the output widget as the ultimate container so the container can contain all kind of widget html widget uh, sp uh, slider widget any widget can be put within the output widget so in this case we're just going to create an app widget again you want to set the uh, widget width you can also have the padding uh, not really necessary but uh, after that you can print something to the widget right so let me just execute on uh, this one here you can clear the, clear the output if you want so every time when is printing something to the widget you want to cre uh, clear the previous uh, text so this is how we can do that now we have all the widgets so this is how we can put everything together to show to see the one here that uh, i show you uh, at the uh, at the beginning and so let me execute this one then you can go through line by line so here we create a vertical box so the vertical box because if you see from this up in here right they are all we have multiple rows and so if we have a vertical box then you can have one row second so now two three four something like that once you create an empty vertical box then you can uh, change the, the chosen so the chosen shows you what kind of widget you want to put inside again it must be put within a list if i don't put for example if i just create an empty one if i did any of all of this and then just uh, execute you won't see any error messages because this is an empty vertical box so and then within there for each item uh, is going to be one row so the first one we want to see is the uh, so within the vertical box you can have a horizontal box uh, horizontal box you can also have vertical box so this is basically um, a container that you can contain multiple widgets uh, uh, in it and the first one here is these two so right we have these two buttons these two buttons are put together within a horizontal box so the first one here is the close button the second one is the two bar button and then the checkbox so keep in mind within the uh list this is one item and then comma the second item is the checkbox right so you will see this one right now i have with one but you you, are, you can have multiple if you want so i can so the, for example i can copy this one and then I can have another horizontal box and then you can have multiple for example checkbox and if you have another one but right now i don't have but i can have two copies oh need to have a comma at the end and this one is like to the right you yeah, see here we have because earlier when we set the uh the widget the width uh anything this checkbox has the entire widget width so we, we this is just an example so you that if you want to have multiple you can do that but i'm just going to just simply use the uh, checkbox here okay so next one is the slider so the slider we have the ink slider but we also have the label right so this is how we can see the changes so this one is the label this this one here this portion is the slider also the floating slider then the drop down this right and then the text uh, color then the text area okay and then the three buttons last one here is the output so this is how we can control all the things it, you can clear this one if you want so if i just clear clear this one and then you just control enter again you run this one again now that one is gone so the user doesn't by default when this force loaded you don't need to really show anything but when the user clicked for example apply and then you can print something beneath in here like okay the program is running please wait uh, please be patient something like that so this is how you can show some messages to uh, the user i will going to show you more detail in the next video okay so that's all for this uh, video how you can uh, use this as kind of a starting point an example to modify and you can choose a lot of things from the this is just a, a few example if you want to learn more you can go to the ipad uh, widget uh, uh, website and click the widgets on the left side here you have a widget uh, list so 
So this one here has a long list. Uh, we only use maybe uh, 10, but there are a lot more you, uh, you can choose from and depends on the, your application. It can get quite quite complicated, but we just use some common one uh, in here. And also uh, go to this URL. If you want your button to have some icons, uh, you might want to look at this one to find out which one uh, is uh, suitable for your application. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.